As the sun rises over the West Bank city of Ramallah, Raja Shahade buys some breakfast to bring on his walk. Mr. Shahade is a lawyer who represents Palestinians in Israeli land courts. He is also the founder of Al Haq, a human rights group. But his passion is walking in the nearby hills, and it's this that's provided the subject matter of his new book, Palestinian Walks Forays into a Vanishing Landscape. Walking in Ramallah, in the, in the Ramallah hills, sometimes you don't know where it's safe to go, sometimes you don't know where you could be shot at if you go. You thank God every time you come back safe. The book recounts six walks Shahada has taken over the past three decades, and it features a side of the occupied West Bank that is rarely seen. Mr. Shahade grew up in Ramallah, but began to walk in the surrounding hills after returning from law school in London. When I came back uh, from my studies in uh, London, uh, I had plenty on my plate. I was starting off as a lawyer. I was starting with al Haq and it was a very big challenge. Uh, also, I was finding the society uh, oppressive somewhat. And so, um, and then of course there was the occupation. Uh, and, and the occupation also meant un trying to understand a lot and understand what is happening, understand how to deal with the changes that are occurring and, and the sense of despair and hopelessness. So I found that uh, going on walks uh, was extremely important because it was a time that I left behind everything. It played a very important part in my being able to think through things, uh, reflect and discover what was around me. The Arabic word sarha means taking cattle to pasture and the common colloquial meaning is going to nature to, for a walk without an end in, in sight, without an objective. This is how it should be in nature, you should not be going purposefully trying to get somewhere, it should just be an open-ended walk uh, where you have communion with nature. Every aspect of our, our life in, in the occupied territories is full of restraints, certain restraints in space, and also the feeling that time is against you, because as you see these settlements happening and, and the changes that are leading uh, to the destruction of your future as a people in, in the land, uh, there is also a time restraint. From most hilltops, Shahade can see Israeli settlements, one of the most contentious issues of the conflict here. Because of past run-ins with settlers, he now tries to keep a distance. Being in nature, uh, I could forget. I could, I could just open up. And so it was a way of defeating the compression of the space that was taking place by the occupation. And in, in that sense, a, a kind of resistance to the occupation. The idea behind walking is to leave behind the conflict that affects so much of life here, but the changes to the landscape can be difficult to ignore. Uh, this road in the valley was the main artery between Jerusalem and Nablus, two main urban centers. As we can see, there's, there are no, no cars on this segment of the road because it's been blocked on, on the two sides. And all traffic uh, coming to Ramallah is diverted to go through the village, which is now a, a town of Birzeit, where the university is, in order to reach Ramallah through Atara, where there is a main checkpoint. So it's a big diversion. Oh. 
Crusader castles dot the land all over Palestine, and now they are uh, many of them are are in ruins, and you realize that. Uh, the Crusaders, which ruled this area for many hundreds of years, uh, nothing is left of them except these piles of stones, essentially. Uh, and ultimately, that's, uh, empires come and empires go. And so it is very important for one's liberation and uh, health, uh, spiritual health, to remember how we are a small dot in this continuum of time. And, uh, uh, and the walks help in all of this.